boys and girls. It's Sunday, and I'm Brother Chuck. I'm with you today, and we're going to uh, just do our Sunday school time together. Let's start off today with a song. We're going to start off with a moving song, so I need you to stand up. I need you to stand up, please, out of your chairs, out of your lazy boys, off the floor, wherever you are. I need you to stand up where you are. So we're going to do a motion song to get us moving this morning, to get us awake, because church is about to start in just a little bit. So we need you to wake up. So here we go. You ready? All right, we're going to sing, I'm in right, out right, upright, down right. You know how to do it. You've been singing this for years, so let's sing it with me together. I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, happy all the time. I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, happy all the time. Since Jesus Christ came in and cleansed my heart from sin. I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, happy all the time. Hey! All right, good job. All right. Now, let's sing a, another song. We're going to sing, this song is gonna go with the lesson today, so we're gonna sing 12 Men Went to Spy on Canaan. You know the motions, just using our hands here. So 12 men went to spy on Canaan, 10 were bad and two were good. Are you ready? Here we go. 12 men went to spy on Canaan, 10 were bad and two were good. What do you think they saw in Canaan? 10 were bad and two were good. Some saw giants big and strong. Some saw grapes of clusters long. Some saw God was in it all. Ten were bad and two were good. Bump, ba da bump, 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 bump. All right, we're going to get into our, our first lesson for the day, and we're going to talk a little bit about exercise. What have you been doing during your quarantine? Have you been uh, sitting there watching TV? Have you been get, getting binge watching your favorite shows? Have you been playing video games? And all those things, I'm not going to say there's anything wrong necessarily with those things. But are you staying active? The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4, 8, that bodily exercise profiteth little. Now, when you first look at that, it does say it profiteth little. But let me say first that it does profit something. It may be just a little bit because the rest of the verse talks about godliness and that's what really profits us. But the first part of that verse talks about exercise, bodily exercise. And I brought to you with me today a weight. This is a simple weight. It's about, um, looking at it, five divided by three, so carry the four. This is about 150 pounds right here. And you see how easily I'm picking this up because I'm strong. Now, I'm picking this up because I'm showing you about exercise. What are you doing in your spare time and all this free time that you have? Are you, are you doing something with it? I mean, there's plenty of things that you can be doing. You can be uh, going out for walks. You can going out for runs. You can ride a bike. You can play basketball. There's still a lot of things. I know you're stuck at home and, and they tell us that we have to stay home, but there's still things that you can do. You can run. You can do jumping jacks. You can do push-ups. You can do a lot of things that we can do to keep ourselves active. Our body needs exercise. Exercising reg regularly it's good for your body and for your mind. It produces chemicals in your body that make you feel good. It gives you a sense of accomplishment as you reach goals. You know, you can jump higher, you can run faster, you can lift heavier weights like I did with those 150 pounds, like it was nothing. It helps you sleep better. It helps fight off certain diseases, such as diabetes and high blood pressure. It helps strengthen your bones and will keep your body feeling young longer. I noticed that for myself, when I skip exercise for a period of time, that I have aches and pains that pop up. My knees begin to hurt, my back hurts, my insides hurt, I become a mess. During this pandemic, this crisis we are in, I hope you are spending some time in physical activity, more than just exercising your thumbs, you know, playing basketball, going for a walk, doing these things that are keeping yourself active. You can even find workout videos to do at home. Something, anything to keep your body moving. Physical exercise. The Bible says, and we'll go back to the verse in 1 Timothy 4, 8, for bodily exercise profiteth little. Yes, it does just, maybe it's just a little bit, but it does profit something. Years ago, I would not have been able to lift this 150 pounds as easily as I do now. But because with exercise, I'm getting stronger and I can do more. So yes, exercising your body is important, 
But now we're also going to talk about other ways that we can exercise. We can exercise our mind, and when we get to the lesson, we're going to talk about exercising our faith. All right, for this next part, we're going to talk about exercising our minds. Just as physical exercise is important, exercising your mind is important too. I'm sure that many of you by now, if not all, have started school again. You've started doing some school in some way, whether it's virtually, you get your teacher gives you packets or whatever it is, but somehow you're doing some school. And I hope that you're focusing during that time, that you're focusing on your schoolwork because school is still important. Working your mind is important. Working out your mind is important. Your mind is like a muscle. It needs to be worked. So during this time, don't just, as I said earlier, don't just watch TV. Don't just play your video games. Do some puzzles. Read a book. Learn something new. My wife right now, it's a little harder for her right now, but you know, up for, for, for months now, she's been working on learning how to sign. She's learning sign language, American Sign Language. She's always working on it at home. Um, my uh, daughter Starla, she's getting on her because my wife will sometimes, while she's driving, she's trying to work on signing. She's trying to sign and, and Starla looks at her and says, Mom, we're driving right now, focus on driving. Don't worry about signing. But, she's, but my wife, she wants to learn how to sign. She's challenging her mind. And as she's getting older, don't tell her I said that, but as she's getting older, she needs to challenge her mind. It's more important as we get older to work our minds. Now let me show you a way to exercise your mind. Today we are going to learn a verse. We're going to work together on a verse. This is a great verse for this situation we are in. It is a simple verse that all of you can learn. The verse today is Psalm 56 verse 3. It's got two little phrases. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Can you say that with me together now? What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Psalm 56 verse 3. Let's say it together now, again. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Psalm 56 verse 3. I like the way that verse goes together because as you say the whole thing, it kind, of, it kind of has a flow to it. It kind of has a rhythm. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Psalm 56, verse 3. Are you afraid? Do you ever feel fear? During those times, what do you do? Do you hide under your bed? Do you hide in a closet? Do you run away? What does the psalmist say he does when he is afraid? When he's afraid, I will trust in thee. He's talking about God there. Let's go over the verse one more time. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Psalm 56, verse 3. Did you know this song has been, or this verse has been put into a song? Let's sing it together now. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Psalm 56 verse 3. Remember that as you go throughout your day. I hope that song sticks with you. I hope that psalm sticks with you throughout this day, throughout the rest of this week. As you, as you feel fear coming into your life, as you feel afraid, that you remember this verse. When I'm afraid, I will trust in God. All right, and now it is time to get our Bibles out. It's time for the lesson. If you take your Bible and turn it to 1 Samuel chapter 17, we'll get there in just a second. Um, but I want to talk to you today about exercise, as we've been talking about already. We've been talking about physical exercise and the importance of physical exercise. We've been talking about our minds and exercising our minds and the importance of exercising our minds. But now, as we get into the lesson, I want to talk about exercising your faith. Let's get into this lesson. Did you know that faith grows? It is like your muscles. When you exercise, you grow your muscles. Our story today is about a boy who faced a giant. Not just a giant pandemic, not just a giant crisis, but a real, live giant. This is a familiar story and I will not be able to tell the whole story, but I will just give a quick recap. The armies of Israel and the armies of the Philistines stood against each other. They were at battle. Goliath, the champion of the Philistines, cursed God and his people for 40 days. One day, David was sent to go check on his brothers and when he went there, he heard this giant cursing God. 
And when David heard that giant, that man Goliath cursing God, he became angry. And he wanted someone to do something about it. David was brought before the king, and at first the king would not send David. If you take a look in your Bibles at 1 Samuel chapter 17 and in verse number 34, we'll start reading uh, for our lesson today. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. The servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing hath, he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Let's pray. I haven't prayed yet. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask that you would please bless our time together. Bless this lesson. Help it to speak to the hearts of the, 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 those listening. In Jesus' name, amen. We see in this passage how David's faith grew. We see how David's faith in God grew. How did his faith grow? Well, first of all, he exercised his faith. We read in this story when, when the king looked at David and said, David, you're too small. You're, you're just a youth. There's no way that you're going to be able to go face this giant. What did David say to the king? He said, well, I remember a time when I faced a lion. And I remember another time that I faced a bear. And when I had to face that bear, and when I had to face that lion, I was able to slay them both. I was able to defeat them. And just like I was able to defeat those, them, I will be able to defeat this giant, Goliath. As a young boy, in the field, I'm sure that he faced, even before he faced the, the lion or before he faced that bear, that he faced many imaginary foes. I, I remember growing up as a, as a kid and I would spend many times in the woods or I would spend time in the fields and I would, I would pick up rocks and I would throw them and I would try to aim at, aim at uh, cans or bottles. I would set up targets and I would picture an enemy. I would picture the, the, the foe, the imaginary foe. And I can see David out there as he's preparing for just those, those days when he might have to defend his sheep. As he would go out there and he would take that slingshot and he would fling it out there and, and imagine a, a lion or a bear or a wolf or some kind of animal, something getting ready to take it and how he was able to save those sheep. And time and time again, he would face imaginary foes and he was able to defeat them. Then one day when that bear came, he was able to catch that bear and and save the sheep. When the lion came, it says he grabbed that lion by the beard and he slew that lion to save the sheep. He exercised his faith growing up. And when it came time to face this giant, he says, you know what, King? I've already faced a lion. I've already faced a bear. I know that I can face Goliath. How did his faith grow? He encouraged his faith. What do I mean? He worked on his craft, his talent. He knew his slingshot. Well, in the, in, the, in the verses later after that, the king wanted to give uh, uh, David his own sword. And, and, and David picked up that sword and he said, you know what, I don't know if I can use this. But I do know how to use my slingshot. I do know how to use this. He says, you know what, I can take this slingshot. I know my slingshot. I know how to use this. He knew the kind of rocks to pick up. The, the ones that work the best. You see in the story how... It says he went to the brook and he found five smooth stones. He knew the exact kind of rocks that he would need to do this. He knew his craft. He knew his slingshot. He practiced all the time, improving his aim, getting better with it. He encouraged his faith. And number three, he examined it. David understood that even though he may be good at something, that the real source of his power came from God. David did not have faith in himself to defeat the lion or bear. He trusted in God. We see in verse number 37, we'll read it again. When David was talking to the king, David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. See, David didn't just trust in himself. He didn't trust in himself at all. He says it was God. Yes, maybe God used my hand to deliver the, the sheep from the, the, the hand of the, the paw of the bear and the paw of the lion. But he understood that it was God that delivered him. 
And now he's getting ready to face a giant. He knew that it would be God that gives him this victory as well. Before we close, I want to take you to another group of people found in Numbers 13. They too had to face giants, but the outcome was much different. God took them through the desert. He fed them with bread from heaven. He gave them water from a rock, divided the Red Sea so they could cross, then brought the, the Red Sea down on, on the enemies. He delivered Israel with a mighty hand from Egypt. He led them through the, through the desert and a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. God did all these mighty things. And when it came time to face the giants, what did they, what did they do? They lost their faith. Why? Because all throughout those things that God was doing, God was preparing them, getting them ready to face those giants. But what did they do during that whole time? We don't find them asking God for anything. We don't find them trusting God in anything. What were they doing? They were complaining. They were murmuring. They were backbiting. They were fighting amongst themselves. They didn't even trust their leader to get them, to get them there. So all these things that God was doing to prepare them to face the giants, they missed it. They were not growing their faith like David did in our story. See, David, when it came time to face the giant, he was ready. Why? Because he exercised his faith. He grew his faith. And I hope that during this time that you're finding time that you're getting closer to God and not farther away. This is an easy time, I know, for many to get farther away from God and to, to, get, to, get, to turn your eyes from God. We're, we're not in church as, as, we, as we used to. We're not riding the buses. We're not coming to church like we were. But I hope that this situation is not pushing you away from God, but rather pushing you to God, making you look to God and remembering that what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. We're remembering this story of David that when it comes time to face a giant that you're ready for it because, hey, you've already faced the lion. You've already faced the bear. You've already fought, faced those imaginary foes that you have growing up. You've already faced these things. And as those things come into your life, that you're letting those things make you stronger. Take time to exercise your faith. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I hope that during this time, as we look into this situation, that every one of them, Lord, you know my heart, and as I think of, of those that were in my junior church, that I'm praying for them, and I'm, I'm hoping that they are getting closer to you. Lord, increase our faith, as your disciples said. Increase our faith during this time. I think of the man... Who, uh, whose son was, was, needed healing. And he looked at Jesus and said, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Lord, I pray that you would help each one that is with us this morning, that you would help us all to increase our faith, to grow our faith, to exercise our faith. Lord, we love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I hope to see you in church is getting ready to start in just a few minutes. Go ahead and get your drink of water, take your restroom breaks, whatever you need to do, get ready for church. I'll see you there.